So, the example I just gave uh, had two goods, they are perfect substitute for each other and what does it mean when I say they are perfect substitute for each other? It simply means that two goods are that, that two goods are perfect substitute for a consumer. Of course, we should not forget that we are talking about a particular consumer. Okay. If we change the consumer, the example I gave you tea and cola, it might not be perfect substitute for the other consumer. So, of course, we have to keep in mind that we are talking in context of a particular consumer. So, two goods are perfect substitute for a consumer if he is willing to exchange one good for the other good in the fixed ratio. ratio. No, and also what is important that no matter what, how much of unit 1 uh, of good 1 and good 2 he has. So, at all level he is willing to exchange good 1 to good 2 in the same proportion, then only these two goods would be perfect substitute. Now, we are going to study another case where goods are perfect complement of each other. Okay. So, take example of let us say that good 1 and good 2, let us take some example. On good 1 we have left su and good 2 we have right so. Okay. You cannot use left so without right so. Of course, I am talking about a person who has who has both his legs intact. Okay. Uh, similarly, let us take example of bread and butter. Uh, you can eat bread and butter on its own, but let us say for the example sake that whenever you have two slices of bread, you will take one unit of butter. Similarly, you can say that tea, one unit of tea requires one unit of milk. You consume them in the fixed proportion and if one good is absent, the second good is not valuable at all for the consumer. Okay, fine. So, in this case, let us say, let us take an example where you have, of course, here when I talk about soup, these are all the same type of soup. So, we have 10 left soups and 5 right soups. How many pair of soups you can use? 5 only, 5 pairs, 5 are 5 left shoes are useless. Similarly, let us say you have just for example, 12 slices of bread and you have only 5 units of butter. How many slices of bread you can use? Only 10, 10 slices and plus 5 units of butter that you will use and 2 would be 2 slices would be wasted. Similarly, rather than naming them you can think of such examples. Let us say you need good 1, A units of good 1 and B units of good 2 okay, to have one perfect combination. Okay. Now, if let us say you are living in a world, of course, the world for the example sake it is made of only two goods and let us say in that good, that world both the goods are perfect complement, this these are the examples of perfect complement. What do I mean by perfect complement? That one good is valueless if the other good is not present in the fixed predetermined proportion. Okay, not just in any fixed proportion because this ratio is important. How would you draw the indifference curve how and how would you describe the utility function? So, let us try to describe, let us try to describe the indifference curve first starting with 
10 slices of bread and 5 units of butter and let us say here we have bread and here we have butter and here we have 10 and this is let us say for example sake this is this is 5 units of butter fine let us say your level of satisfaction is this much given by red point that gives the red point denotes 10 comma 5 bundle fine now let us say that the amount of bread remains the same but amount of butter goes up now from it is 5 to 6 so you are moving from here to here does this person experience any change in the sat level of satisfaction or in other words change in level of utility no same it goes up 6 7 8 level of utility would remain same as this particular bundle 10 comma 5 bundle similarly let us say if we have if we keep the amount of butter fixed and we increase the amount of bread from 10 to 11 or 11 to 12 what would happen amount of bread butter is fixed at 5 so again the utility will not increase level of satisfaction will not increase so all these red points they are at the same utility level it means a curve passing through all these points would represent the same indifference would be on the same indifference curve so let's see what happens if we decrease from 10 comma 5 if we decrease the amount of butter to 4 what will happen now if we move amount of its now we are here what will happen the utility level will decrease so this point is no long it is not on the same indifference curve so let us erase this this is not on the same indifference curve okay and similarly here if we keep the level of butter same and if we decrease the amount of bread again it will not be on the same indifference curve utility will decrease so this part also we should erase so what we will get is basically this this will be the indifference curve just quick deviation little small deviation do you think here this the preference of this person is convex or it is not convex. Similarly, let me let me draw a few more indifference curve and they will be like when we move from 10 to let us say here 12 and then here 6 and then again we get another indifference curve and so on we can get. things like that we will get is it convex is it a strictly convex let us look at it let us take this one if we pick any two bundle let us say the bundles are this is one bundle this is another bundle and we draw a line at all these points utility level is higher okay but how about when we pick this point and these this point and we draw a line utility level is same so it means it satisfies con convexity but not strict convexity is it clear remember earlier i talked about it that the all the axioms rationality axioms continuity axiom monotonicity and strict convexity if all these are satisfied then we can use our optimization technique but here one strict convexity is not satisfied fine okay now we have drawn we have drawn our indifference curves how can we give the utility what will be the utility equal to let us say br denotes bread and bu denotes butter 
minimum of B R comma let us check B R comma 2 B A means let us take the example here is the point here is the point 12 comma 5 what do we get minimum of 12 comma 2 multiplied by 5 so that is equal to 10 is this fine so this one is also what we what we mean to say here is that to increase increase utility by one unit although i am using here in the cardinal sense but one unit is meaningless i am just talking about the ranking so increase utility by one unit what do we need we need increase in one unit butter two unit bread and one unit butter that's what we need okay or in other word one unit of bread will increase half unit of utility if we have one unit of butter i'm saying that if you have one more unit of butter if if bread is going up by one unit then and if we have one more unit of butter then in ordinal sense let's say that utility will increase by half so in other word we can say utility is br by 2 multiplied by bu but here these two are different aren't they but if you notice the second one is the monotonic transformation of the first one or the first one is the monotonic transformation of the second one you multiply the whole thing by 2 what we will get minimum of br multiplied by 2 bu so they represent the same utility level or we can say that if you require let us say to increase in utility by one unit you require a units of good one and b units of good two so how many one unit of good will increase the one by a so utility is going to be represented by minimum of x1 by a and x2 by b and if you multiply by whole thing you can also say this is equivalent to minimum of b x1 a x2 fine this is the utility representation now how about the optimal consumption bundle how about optimal consumption bundle always be on the corner point that we have okay fine so if it is always on the corner point what does it mean how can we solve the problem now the problem is let us say maximize minimum of let us say this is the problem b x 1 comma a x 2 with respect to x 1 comma x 2 such that p 1 x 1 plus p 2 x 2 is equal to i again we do not have to worry about less than or equal to sign because this does it satisfy monotonicity it does not satisfy monotonicity it satisfy the another version of monotonicity the version that we have talked about in the class is not satisfied what we have said in the class that same amount of all the other goods and at least the person has some more of one good then his utility will be higher than the previous situation scenario that is not true here. So, that version of monotonicity is not satisfied yes only on the joining corners this is satisfied but fortunately here the optimal bundle lies on the on the corner itself so what how can we solve from here what we need to maximize utility what we need is bx1 is equal to ax2 
if this is not equal then you are wasting at least one of the you are wasting one of these two goods okay because both goods are expensive okay so now you have two equation two linear equation and it's very easy to solve so let's solve it what will you get x1 is equal to ax2 by b so p1 ax2 by b is equal to p2 x2 i so basically what we have a p 1 plus b p 2 x 2 by b is equal to i. So, x 2 is so x 2 is b i a p 1 plus b p 2 and x 1 is if you solve it you will get a i a p 1 plus b p 2. So, x 1 and x 2 are in a is to b ratio that is how we started uh, that in the description it is clear and solution will be on kink.